No less than three distilleries are on this episode's agenda. Kilbegan, Tullamore and Dingle. And we stumble upon one main difference between independent distilleries and major companies. After a peaceful and relaxing night rest inside our very quietly situated apartment, we were up for an early start into a brand new day that had two of the best known distilleries in Ireland on its agenda, Kilbegan and Tullamore. All the batteries were fully charged, all the footage had been securely backed up and so two happy-go-lucky motivated IT techs went on the way to see what's what. Kilbegan Distillery was founded in the 1750s and taken over by the Lockheed's family, whose name is still on that old chimney, in 1840. They successfully ran business for over a hundred years until history took its course and after the world wars and the war of independence and prohibition in the United States, they had to close down for goods. In 1988, John Teeling bought the whole thing, following his vision to mature the whiskey that is produced by Cooley's distillery in the old warehouses here. The distillery part of Kilbegan was restored by a local community with a lot of blood, sweat and tears, and we are going to pay our respects in a minute. No, we will not. Because filming inside the museum is forbidden, Except one contacts their lawyer weeks ahead, what we didn't. Okay then. That did not stop me though from flying my drone round around the house. And inside the inner courtyard it at least was permitted to take pictures. So I did. Many pictures. There actually is a lot to tell about Kilbegan. Especially in recent years, things were happening here. The latest milestone for example was set on March 19, 2007. To celebrate its 250th birthday, lots of effort was put into bringing distillation back into steam. An ancient pot still from the 19th century was being restored and to the day 54 years after the distillery had been closed, was reheated again. Ever since, the old wooden washbacks and fermentation tanks, along with the apparently oldest running pot still in Ireland, holding 1500 liters of capacity, are back into operation producing 250,000 bottles annually that are even stored and matured here, in barrels, of course. Cooley Distillery still uses the warehouses to mature its whiskies like Connemara or Turconnell. And since its reopening, Kilbegan, a traditional Irish whisky, is being produced here. And if they hadn't been taken over along with Cooley by Beam Suntory, John Teeling and his sons probably still would, proudly and independently wander through its halls. We went on to the next distillery, a real iconic Irish trademark named Tullamore. <laughs> In 1829, a year before Robert Steen introduced his column still to the world, 
Talimur Distillery was established right here in the town of Talimur, in the middle of a fruitful growing area for barley and corn. At the early age of 14, uh, Daniel Edmund Williams started his working career here and with hard work raised himself all the way to be a general manager and distillery manager. He designed the famous logo by adding his initials DEW, Daniel Edmund Williams, to the logo. And in the 1950s, they added the two wolfhounds that represent strength and loyalty as typical Irish qualities. I asked them kindly if I were allowed to film during the tour, and they said yes. So I bought two t-shirts and a Glencairn glass and a tour and a tasting. And that's how you do business. Tullamore Dew is triple distilled and is a blend of all three types of Irish whiskey pot still, grain, and malt whiskey. It has won more than 30 national and international awards within the last few years. But also, the single malts made by Tullamore are exceptionally good and is a must have for every whiskey collection. The distillery was acquired by William Grant and Sons in 2010 and so became independent, owned by a Scottish family, and finds itself in good company with Glenfiddich and Belveni, just to name a few of the well-knowns. Here inside the old distillery, only the visitor center is located. In 2013, William Grant and Sons opted to construct a new distillery out of town. Reason enough to go there and perform a discreet flyby with the drone. Since 2014, single malt and pot still whiskey are being produced within the neat new building on three pot stills, as well as being matured on location. Tullamore always was open for innovations. They were the first to open their distillery for public, or for example try the Solera concept with Glenfiddich. It was early afternoon, and so we spontaneously decided to do a little detour and pop in at a pretty new, but all the more exciting distillery. Located inside an old sawmill within Milltown on the outskirts of Dingle. The very independent Dingle Distillery. This time though, the weather did not play along at all. But desperate times call for drastic measures, I guess. In 2012, when the first drop of whiskey ran through the condensers of Dingle Distillery, Europe's westernmost distillery, it was actually the first drop of whiskey not to be produced by the three big ones, and therefore the first real independent whiskey. And so were the dudes who founded the distillery, three free-spirited guys who decided to compete against all those giants by focusing on quality and not on quantity and giving birth to the ultimate Irish whiskey. Dingle Distillery may be small, but it's excellent, producing approximately two barrels of whiskey a week. Pretty much like Bruchladig's old concept, you can become a founding father of Dingle Distillery by buying a barrel of whiskey in advance, where maturation time and cask type can be determined. They produce on three copper pot stills that I was accompanied to for taking pictures, even though we had not booked the tour and showed up unannounced, where they triple distill their pot still and malt whiskey. Once again, we experienced a very noticeable difference to the major corporations in how two camera and microphone equipped, greatly enthusiastic dudes as we are, are being welcomed. Thank you, guys.
After a hard day's work, <coughs> we went back to the water lane apartment. But before we would spend our second night there, decided to take a hike into the town of Galway to grab a bite to eat and a dram to drink. In the next episode, we meet a multi-language genius at the Cliffs of Mohair and join the Jameson experience before we rock the district called Temple Bar back in Dublin. We need your help, so our channel can keep growing. Maybe you know someone interested in all things whiskey that you can recommend us to. Check out our playlist, Vlogs in English. Each click and every minute playtime does help. And we do enjoy each and every comment, so please feel free. Please take the chance to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell, so you will be notified whenever something's going on. It's all free. Thank you.